Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. So uh, Kamala Harris uh, dusted off the former Mrs. Arnold Schwarzenegger to uh, moderate a little town hall gathering she had. Uh, Liz Cheney also prominently featured. She was with her two besties. This was this was a fun moment. <laughs> uh, Rhea Shriver um, on uh, whether or not uh, Kamala will be taking any questions from the audience. You're not, unfortunately. We have some uh, predetermined questions, and I hopefully I'll be able to ask some of the questions that might be in your head. I hope so. (laughs) Who needs your own mind when you have Maria Shriver thinking for you? (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Yeah, we've uh, we've got some scripted questions, and then, you know, I'll fill in the blanks if uh, Kamala struggles even with the pre-scripted questions. So that's where uh, that uh, operation is at. Uh, Harry Enten, the uh, data reporter for CNN. Uh, let's let's go ahead and keep I using CNN's him. numbers. Listen to CNN break down the race for us. Harry Enten uh, describing to um, a uh, disappointed news desk that uh, Trump is significantly more popular as we stand here today or yesterday than he was at the same point in 2020 or 2016. And um, that probably is a problem for Kamala. I think there are a lot of folks such as myself who think that Donald Trump's unpopularity is baked in. But here's the deal. If you believe that Donald Trump has somehow become less popular over time, let me change your mind about that. In fact, he is more popular at this point in the campaign than he was at this point in the 2020 campaign or the 2016 campaign. Look, he's still underwater, right, with a negative nine point net favorability rating. But that is higher than he was in 2020 at minus 12 points when he nearly won. And it is way higher than the minus 27 net favorability back in 2016 when he did win. So I think there's this real question in Kamala Harris's mind, in the campaign's mind, why is Trump more popular now than he was at this point in 2020 and 2016? And I think that is why you're seeing the sharpening attacks because they want to put him back down to here, yeah. or even there's no way that they're necessarily going to back down to here, but they want to make Trump more unpopular than he is right now because he's more popular now than either point in 2020 or 2016. And if you don't think that that's real, then you have to explain to yourself why Uh, Democrat senators in swing states are going after the Trump vote. Why Bob Casey, for example, in Pennsylvania is is sort of realigning himself as, uh, you know, somebody who shares a lot in common with Donald Trump, even though he's like voted in lockstep with Biden, Harris and uh, and and Schumer uh, for the previous six previous four years. Um, so it, it, there's a lot of indications that what Harry Enten is describing is actually what is happening on the ground. For more on this, speaking of being on the ground, Mike Collins is a congressman from Georgia's 10th congressional district, but he is in Northwest Indiana to support our friend Randy Niemeyer running for Congress to try to upset Frank Mervan in that race, as we were discussing with Randy uh, the other week. Representative Collins, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, good morning. Great to be on with you. So, um, uh, well, first of all, you and Randy, uh, this is sort of interesting. You uh, you share um, sort of a, prof- a similar professional background. You're both in the trucking business. Yeah, that's right. I'm second generation in the trucking industry. My wife and I, we started a trucking company a little over 30 years ago. And uh, our sons now run that, that, along with my younger brother and my nephew. And and, um, you know, I mean, the, the sort of the sensibility of, of Randy, who was, a, you know, was a driver himself for uh, I think he still is. But I mean, in, in addition to running his company. But, you know, the sensibility of somebody like that um, with that professional background, as opposed to, you know, having more lawyers and bankers and such in Congress. No, you're 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 exactly hitting the nail on the head. You know, it's uh it's one thing I've been saying. I've never been elected anything, and I'm, a, you know, obviously a freshman uh, in Congress. And uh, we've actually picked out nine people across this country, and that was one of the criteria that I used to pick out, not trucking, but just business background. Uh, I think the fact that uh, Rainey and I are both in the most regulated and taxed industry that there is in this country, though, gives us a unique perspective on what uh, – 
just what the federal government has been doing to uh, to, to businesses out there across this country and uh, crushing the uh, small entrepreneurship. So, you know, out of 435 people in Congress, I am the only one that owns, operates a trucking company on a daily basis and has a commercial driver's license in my back pocket. Well, that's it. Well, CGL, yeah. let's go on a convoy. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I love that movie, by the way. um, Speaking of convoys, um, we were just talking about it before you joined us. We have a convoy, uh, another convoy uh, heading from uh, the southern border of Mexico to our southern border, reportedly some 2,000 strong. Uh, So, you know, as we go into Election Day, it seems to me that uh, if we didn't need more emphasis on the issue of border security, then the continued problems of porous borders, yeah. open borders, uh, is going to be revisited uh, in, in, uh, at a time when Kamala could, uh, uh, could, could, <laughs> could, uh, it could, could not be worse for her. You know, and, and, and to think about that open border and, you, you know, whether it's gangs, fentanyl, sex trafficking, doesn't matter. You, uh, you just look at my district, the 10th district of Georgia, that's where Lake and Riley was murdered, yep. brutally murdered. Got her head bashed in with a by a thug murderess that came across that border. And then you have Kamala Harris, who sits there and can't take any of the uh, the 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 the, the honors on on being responsible for what's going on down there. That alone ought to get people stirred up enough to make sure that we just flood these polls with Republicans and vote this type of mess out. We have got to get rid of people like her that are that are just letting these people invade this country, invade this country because they they want them in here and they want them on the government dole. They are taking yours and my taxpayer dollars and they are putting these people up. They're busting them around the country, flying them around the country, and giving them new clothes and places to stay just so that they can create a new class of voter to make sure that they stay in power from now on. Well, how has the death... There's no other reason to go vote. Use that to go vote. Yep, the future of our country is at stake. How has the murder of Lake and Riley affected the members in your congressional district? Well, uh, it's it's still very much raw. You know, you you take a young lady that was just out for a jog, and, uh, you know, and, and we hear all this about weapons and Second Amendment and guns. This guy, this guy brutally murdered her with a rock. And and uh, and you don't think that doesn't weigh on people's minds? Uh, that's the type of heinous people that we have we have let. And this guy now, this guy got pulled over the week before right. for shoplifting. He got ran out of New York City for create for committing crimes. But yet we didn't have the ability to co- to contact ICE to get rid of him. Uh, and you know I I happen to. Uh, to have a bill out there, it's the Lake and Riley Act. It passed through the House with 37 Democrats supporting that thing. We got that thing through the House in record time, and now it's sitting over in the Senate, and they won't take it up. And you're talking about some of these folks that are over hanging their hat on Trump's back now? Yeah. But why don't they take up Lake and Riley? Why haven't they even mentioned anything about that? It's because they're not really interested. In well, what's their point of contention about the bill? Why, aren't they, why isn't it passing through the Senate? Well, because you got Chuck Schumer over there running the Senate. He wouldn't want to take that up. That would be admitting that we've got criminal activity that's infiltr- infiltrated the country. That that simple bill, it, all it states is that if you're a local law enforcement, you pull somebody over and they're an illegal alien in this country, and you pull them over for a lesser crime than murder, then you can contact the ICE. It just adds theft to the list of things that you can contact. You can contact the ICE, and they can be picked up and deported. It's it's not that hard of a bill, and it's a common sense bill, but they're not going to do that because they want to make sure that they keep as many of these illegals coming through as they can. If uh, if Randy is able to win and upset Mervan and uh, Republicans maintain control of the House and Republicans get control of the Senate and Trump is in the White House, do you, uh, do you think you have, you know, depending on what the majority looks like, but let's say it's a little bit more substantial than it is right now, do you think you have the the fortitude in the caucus to uh, work with the president and whoever the Senate leadership is 
to do something on the order of the mass deportation program that he's been talking about, starting with people in this country who are convicted violent criminals? You know, uh, the makeup of the House right now is around 60, 65 percent America first representatives. That means people that were elected from 2016 up until the last election in 22. Those people ran on America first Trump policy agenda. All we need to do is just get a few more good folks in the, in the House of Representatives. And this time around, you won't have to have Trump sitting there signing executive orders. We're going to be sitting there ready to pass bills, pass legislation, put it over in the Senate. We're going to flip that Senate. So Republicans are going to take the Senate back. And then, by God, we'll get things passed into law. I tell people every day, the 119th Congress has got the ability to make history. We'll, we will have the ability to change the trajectory of this country because it is going in the wrong direction. It is going to hell in the handbasket as fast as it can get there. We got a chance to stop this thing. And I'm not talking about stop it for six months or two years, but I'm talking about for generations to get this place back on track to what it used to be. And, and uh, we're going to get people like Randy in there. He's got a great chance to win. He, he can win his race. We just got to make sure that Republicans go. We win this thing so that blame big that it can't be rigged. And and what's your feeling about Georgia? I mean, some of the early returns, I mean, I don't read too much into this, but but uh, voter registration in the last week in Pennsylvania favored Republicans. Early voting in North Carolina favors uh, Republicans as of this weekend. Um, it seems it, it, and, and the reporting in Virginia and Georgia as well has been strong early turnout from uh, voters in rural counties. So um, what's your what's your handle on Georgia? How optimistic are you about Georgia? Oh, Georgia. Georgia's been breaking records, uh, you know, on turnout. And uh, the turnout's been strong. What we need to do is make sure that we continue that turnout. Georgia is not a purple state. Georgia is a red state. We have we have the House, the Senate, the governor, the lieutenant governor, all constitutional officers. The only thing we don't have is two U.S. senators. And we're going to fix that in one of them in two years from now. But we are not a purple state. We just got to make sure that people turn out to vote. And and I think with the early numbers, you know, it's doing a couple of things. I think it's demoralizing the Democrats right now because Republicans typically like to stay at home because we don't like election season. But uh, when you when the rules are the rules, you need to you need to play at them as hard as you can. We need to be chasing absentee ballots to make sure they get back in. And we need to make sure that people understand when those polls are open and to get there and go vote. Go ahead and bank that vote. Yeah, so Rep. Collins, uh, Mike Collins, who we're speaking with right now on our turnkey.pro answer line, you're in Indiana supporting Randy Niemeyer. What are you two doing today? Oh, man, we've got we've got stops, everything from diners in the morning, greeting and meeting. Uh, we're stopping in a couple of uh, – uh, retirement homes to speak with those folks and we're knocking doors i absolutely love to get out across the country and just knock on people's doors and uh and and, and get a pulse of what you actually see uh, when somebody comes to the door to talk to you about this stuff representative mike collins the only member of congress with a cdl license i like that uh representative for georgia's 10th congressional district in northwest indiana today with randy niemeyer He's the Republican against Frank Mervan. Uh, so if you're in Lake County, Northwest Indiana, you want to pay attention to Randy Niemeyer and get out and support him as well. Representative Collins, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, appreciate y'all's time. Yeah, have a wonderful day. And hopefully there'll be two congressional members with their CDLs. And uh, Mr. Collins, Congressman Collins, joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Before you see it on TV, share it on Facebook or read about it in the paper. Hear it here first. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560. The Answer.